Oh, sugar, da 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 da. Oh, honey, honey. Hello there, and welcome to Food Magic. This is the place where we discover the mysteries and the magic of the ingredients and the food that we eat. And today, I have an especially sweet episode lined up just for you because today we are talking about sugar. Everything from sugarcane to palm sugar and its abilities and how it's able to transform the meals that we eat and the way we cook. So today we're going to learn exactly what is sugar and how these abilities that it possesses allow it to just magically transform itself. It is the primary source of refined and brown sugar, and it is in fact a grass. That's right, it is a tall, fast-growing, sucrose-filled, perennial grass that can be grown all year round. After harvesting, the plant is then washed and then pressed to extract the sugarcane juice, which is technically not correct because sugarcane is not actually a fruit. But anyway, this sweet extract is known as Vezu, and it contains 95% of the sucrose that's present. This is that sweet, enjoyable extract that we like to drink. And because of its very high concentrations of calcium, magnesium, potassium, iron, and manganese, sugarcane is considered an alkaline and has the ability to boost protein levels in the body as well as keeping the kidney healthy. So let's see what makes sugar such an interesting and magical ingredient to work with and starting with something both savory and sweet. We are going to make a glazed lamb shank for our first recipe. This beautiful lamb piece is going to be transformed into this delectable dish that's glazed with a sticky, sugary brown sugar and some really aromatic spices. Here are the ingredients that I've lined up. So we've got an orange, we've got some um, orange juice, we're gonna use the zest of the orange. Uh, over here we've got some salt, pepper, rosemary, diced garlic, and ground clove. And over here, these are sort of gonna be the ingredients that are gonna join our lamb in the oven. So we've got some garlic, onions, um, carrots, and potatoes. And over here is the next portion. This is how we're gonna make our glaze. We've got some honey, some sugar, butter and water, and that's literally all you need. So I'm gonna start by giving our little lamb here a nice massage with the marinade. All right, so let's carefully place them inside. So let's chuck in chopped garlic, ground clove. Next, we're going to add in a little bit of rosemary that's already been sort of chopped into smaller bits. Be generous with your pepper, salt. And now I'm going to add in the juice of an orange. And finally, I'm going to add in the zest of our orange. And now I'm going to make sure this is nicely sealed. We're just going to massage it. Get into every single crevice of your lamb. It's kind of therapeutic, both for the lamb and for me. I think I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna leave it to sit while I work on the glaze. Like with all things, it's, it is quite easy. It just requires a tiny bit of patience. So I'm going to start with butter and it does help if you've already left your butter out for a little while to sit so that you don't have to deal with a clump of solid hard butter. You want to make sure that it's sort of already fairly nice and soft. Add in our sugar and you can use any sugar that you like. As you mix that, we're going to go ahead and add in the water. And 
lastly, the honey. And wait for it to come to a gentle boil. You don't want it to be too thick. You still want it to be fairly liquid. Now, in the meantime, I've got a tray prepared back here. And this is going to be for our little lamb friend with all its vegetables. Slice. You could quarter it or you could halve it. I'm just going to halve my onion. Next, we're going to halve our garlic. Because you want to make sure that, mm, that wonderful flavor and scent of garlic permeates throughout your lamb. Oops. If it gets a bit messy, it's all right. I'm going to halve the potatoes so they cook a little bit faster. Carrots, I've already gone ahead and pre-cut these, so we're just going to add them to the tray as well. Okay, so it's time to add our star ingredient. Ooh, those flavors are really coming together. So let's not let this go to waste. Try to coat your lamb with it as much as possible. I'm gonna leave it in the oven for roughly an hour and 10 minutes. And then finally, right towards the tail end of it, we're gonna add in our glaze. But in the meantime, just give it a quick stir. As soon as it's a nice consistency, you can turn it off and take it off the boil. And we're gonna leave it in there, like I said, for about 70, 80 minutes at 180 degrees and come back and then add our magical touch, our beautiful sticky brown sugar glaze. All right, now it's been an hour and 10 minutes. It's time to bring out our lamb and give it a nice bath with the glaze that we prepared earlier. So. Ooh la la. And what you want to do is just make sure you cover all the lamb. Look at that. Ooh. And as you can see, be very, very generous with it. And that's it. So we're going to pop it back inside the oven for another 30 minutes and it should be ready to eat. This is where the magic. is going to happen. 30 minutes is all it takes. It goes in an ordinary little lamb shank and it will come out a magical piece of delectable meat. An hour and 40 minutes later, and I think this is the most gorgeous glazed lamb shank that I've ever seen, if I may say so myself. Look at that nice crust of sticky sugar glaze, and of course with those aromatic spices, I cannot wait to get this in my belly. But before that, I need to remind you, sugar is of course a soluble sweet carbohydrate, so make sure you take it in moderation. I'll be back very shortly after this magical break, where I get to Take a moment and enjoy this beautiful piece of lamb all by myself. Welcome back. One of the sugars that we are probably most familiar with has got to be this white refined sugar. Now this has been stripped of all its minerals and that's what leaves it with this white glistening sheen. Demerara sugar, on the other hand, is slightly less refined and that means that it still contains some of the minerals like magnesium, manganese, zinc, cobalt and chromium. However, don't get too excited just yet because these are just very, very tiny traces. Now, demerara sugar also contains less sucrose and therefore it's less sweet. However, it doesn't really make much of a difference if you're going on a diet 
or if you're a diabetic, because essentially it still contains the same amount of calories. Now, what we call brown sugar is where molasses is added back into refined sugar. So besides a slight difference in taste, it's pretty much the same sugar. Muscovado sugar has a very wet-like sand texture, and it's also got a very strong molasses flavor. Some say it's bittersweet, and it's definitely richer than other sugars. These hunking blocks of sugar are what are known as jaggery. Now, essentially, it's cane juice or palm sap that have been reduced into these concentrated forms. And you'll notice that the crystals and the molasses have not been separated, unlike the others. Sugar is said to have been first used by men in the Polynesian islands and apparently spread from there to India. And when the Persians invaded India, sometime around 500 BC, this saw the plant which gave honey without bees spread from there to the Arabian Peninsula through invasions and from there to North Africa and Spain. The Europeans then discovered sugar through the Crusades in the 11th century and brought this new spice with the first recorded use of sugar in England in 1099. From there, its use, despite the very high cost, became popular, or more correctly, fashionable, amongst the upper classes who had the money to enjoy the exquisite taste and the variety of food, sweets and delicacies that could be made with it. Did you know the reason why honey lasts forever is because of the sugar that's inside it. Now, you've probably never noticed this, but the sugar that you left on the back shelf of your cupboard for the past two years will look exactly the same. The reason is simple. It's because bacteria doesn't grow on sugar. Ants, on the other hand, well, we all know what ants are capable of. Hi, I'm Sam from Little People Cafe. Today, I will introduce you popia ice cream. This is the ingredient for popia ice cream. This is the popia skin, rose petal, peanut cracker, coriander, promogenate, and also fried popia skin. For popia ice cream, we use raw ingredient. This is for sweet potato. Sweet potato mash, brown sugar, and also cream. And then this is also for the rose. We take out the petal, we mix it with milk, and sugar, cream, and then this is the texture. We freeze this ice cream at least for six hours, or more than that, it should be better. First, take one piece of popia, cut it into six. Now place it on the popia plate. So need two kinds of ice cream. One is sweet potato, another one is rose. Now we will slice some coriander and put it on top. Peanut cracker, chromogenate. Last but not least, our fried popia and then some rose petal. This is our signature popia ice cream. More on sugar after the break.
Welcome back to Food Magic. And it is that time where we are going to round things up with a very sweet and lovely dessert, which to me is always a perennial favorite, and I'm sure it's one of yours too. So this is going to be a cream caramel or a caramel custard. Here are the ingredients that you're going to need. And remember, we're going to make it with two components. First, we're going to start caramelizing the sugar. We've got some white granulated sugar over here. And that is going to be accompanied with a little bit of cinnamon. Now, the other portion of the recipe is actually with some vanilla extract, three eggs, granulated white sugar, and milk. And it's really simple. With these ingredients, we're going to whisk together a nice custard. So let's start. Put this onto a medium flame and we are simply going to add in all the sugar here. This is the first part of the recipe. Watch over it with a very, very careful eye because you don't want it to burn. It's going to take a little bit of time. However, once it's done, it's going to form this really nice, rich, decadent base in these cute little ramekins. Okay, granted I'm exaggerating just a little bit. It doesn't take that long, just a couple of minutes, but as soon as it starts to brown, that's when you know the action is about to happen and you might want to just stand there like a Hawkeye. I can see slowly around the sides, the sugar is starting to dissolve. And remember, try not to use any utensils. All you need to do really is just swirl it around a little bit. Just be really, really careful because it does get extremely hot. Okay, and as soon as you see the last of the sugar dissolve, you can then take it off the flame. And just a tiny bit of cinnamon, turn it off, and take it off the flame. And what we're gonna do is we're going to layer, we're gonna add a tiny layer at the base of our ramekins. Just be really careful, because it's very hot. And what you wanna do is maybe add about a couple of tablespoons. And that should be plenty. So now for the next part of this recipe, we're gonna leave the ramekins on the sidelines. They're gonna watch the rest of the action come together and we're going to make our custard. Now for the custard, it's very simple. I always like to start with the eggs first. Crack three eggs. Add in all the sugar. And then we're gonna slowly add the milk and give it a nice whisk. Now remember, I've also got a little bit of vanilla essence, so you wanna add that in as well, just for a little bit of flavor. And it doesn't have to be super whipped or anything like that. You just wanna incorporate the ingredients. You don't necessarily want too many bubbles. So now comes the fun part of just simply dishing it out. We're going to add in about three quarters of the way. And this is like a really nice little dessert that's light, especially if you don't wanna go through too much pains and efforts, but you just want a nice little sweet treat after your dinner that we've done our custard, we've poured it out. It's time for the cooking process. What you're gonna need is a tray that has sort of like a high wall around it. And we're going to add in our little ramekins right here. And this is what we call the Ban Marie method of um, cooking it. It's a, a really gentle way of cooking your custard so that it doesn't start to curdle, it doesn't start to spit, and it cooks nice and evenly all around. I actually have some pre-boiled water. You want it to be boiling hot, and we're gonna pour it until it reaches about one third or maybe about halfway of your ramekin so that it can cook nice and evenly all around. Okay, so we're gonna add this in. Just be really careful. A little bit of a spa day for our custard caramel. So now I'm going to pop it in the oven. Be really careful with it. Don't underestimate hot water. Mm -hmm. 
And just like that, remember to keep it in there for about 30, 40 minutes. Keep checking on it. And when I come back, I should have this beautiful velvety caramel custard. Say hello to my caramel custard. Now, if you want to present it like this, here's a little tip. I mean, alternatively, you can just eat it straight out of the ramekin. But of course, I've decided to loosen it from, um, from its little house and turn it upside down. Now, one very important message is remember to do it while it's still warm so that it doesn't stick. Otherwise, as you can tell, the caramel starts to get really hard and sticky and it's impossible to wiggle out. And if that does happen, just heat it up for a little bit longer in that tray of water. And the other thing you want to take note of is you want to use a knife, sort of stick it in the middle. If it comes out clear, that means your caramel custard is cooked. And finally, you want to use a knife and sort of trim around the edges to loosen it up and then turn it upside down, flip it, and you should get this beautiful caramel custard like this. Keep some of that caramel sauce, add it on top, and maybe add a cinnamon stick or two for decoration. And there you have it. You can thank me later. That's all the time we have for you today, folks. I hope you have a great time trying out these recipes. However, if you do have issues with sugar, just make sure you cut down on those amounts of sugar in these recipes because, you know, not everything has to be super sweet. And if you have to, you can also use honey or other sweeteners as a substitute. I'm Nadia Heng. May you have a sweet time making food magic. <laughs>